Right, welcome back YouTube. Short, quick video, but it fucking better be because I don't want the fiasco after the head studs, but this should be everything simple. Basically, I was gonna just jump straight to doing the timing chain because there isn't much else to do with the, with the head wires, but uh, there was someone that commented that wanted to know about the head stuff and everything. So I just thought I'd make a quick video just covering what I've already done with the head and just getting the cams in. So I'm just gonna go over it really quick there, just keep it simple. Obviously, the head was skimmed. No matter what you're doing, if it's a budget build or whatever, I'd highly recommend getting the head skimmed because especially if you're using a head spacer or whatever you're using, you want the best ceiling possible. You want the block to be as flat as possible, the head to be as flat as possible, whether you're doing um a space art or whether you're doing a full built engine you want to be doing it regardless so obviously the head was skimmed block was skimmed all of that's all good um then the valves i was planning on just using the valves that came out the ones i already had um it wasn't till it went to the machine shop because i actually had some of it done at the machine shop that's why i haven't covered much on the head it was just the fact that i was getting the block uh, decked and a few other bits and they did a really good price on doing a head refresh so I just wanted them to do it. Lapping in valves is a tedious job. Now if you're doing a budget build you don't necessarily have to lap the valves in, you could just leave the valves in, you don't necessarily have to touch them whatsoever it's really up to you. I wanted to do it just because it's done 100,000 miles, I wanted the seats to be perfect so I just wanted the my original valves lapping in and I'm so glad that I did go down that route because it wasn't till um, he got them out, he said that basically you've got six short valves and six long valves on the intake and the same on the exhaust. Now, he said my long valves on the intake and the exhaust are all 12 long valves. They'll roll, I wanna say bent, he, he said it bent, but to be fair, it's, it's more of a distorted. Um, Cause when he said bent, I was like, well, how can it be bent? The timing chain, I checked the timing chain data, that was all right. And why would it, why would it, how come it drove it? Cause it ran fine. Um, I did cover this a bit in the other video, so I don't want to talk on it too much, but basically it's just, I think it's just due to them being long and obviously 100,000 miles in the heat and everything, they just distort. He said to me, the chances are, because of you've got the, basically the tube it runs through, the valve guide, um, he said when, in the spring, he said when it pulls it up, it probably seats anyway. So it, it, he said it's not necessarily anything wrong, but obviously with what I'm doing, he said obviously I don't recommend leaving them distorted as such. And obviously I, I had agreed with him straight away. I said, no, 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 I'm not using them. He was like, well, you can just get the, the long valves if you want. I was like, look, if I'm gonna change the valves, I might as well just do them all. Um, so around Volkswagen, there were two prices from Volkswagen. I can't even remember how much they were, but they were ridiculous. Um, so, Basically, I got TRW ones, which are OE. I don't know if you lot know, it's basically, I'm sure TRW is a German company. The, the CUM original one, loads of BMs and loads of other stuff. TRW is the top mate. Um, I ordered them from Germany, so I've got a full 24 new valves. They are only OE spec, they're not anything upgraded or anything. They're just TRW OE valves. So he lapped them all in by hand. He has got a machine that he does on sometimes, but he said because of what I'm doing, he went the extra mile. He lapped them in all by hand. You can't, it's just something you can do yourself. I've lapped in valves before. I just really couldn't be asked to do it. It's such a tedious, long job. He's got all the stuff. He did me a good price. I was like, you know what? You just do it. So he did that. Um, I've got the double valve springs. Again, I don't think they're really necessary for the power I'm going for, but I was just kind of worried a bit about valve float. And the reason, I, generally you only get valve float is something you get from when you rev higher, but as well as that, you can get it from the boost, because if you think where the boost is coming in, the valve's open, it's kind of pushing on the valve itself. So when the valves come up, it's trying to work against boost pressure. Obviously, this the, the, the springs are made for naturally aspirated. Whether it's necessary, it's probably not. I'm being a bit over the top, but I started playing it over my head and I just thought, I didn't want to risk it. You could have gone the same with the valves, but the valves, I looked at the SuperTech valves, a few people told me the SuperTech valves aren't very good, apparently they bend as well. So I just kind of, I just thought, you know what, I'll just get the OE spec valves, I'll get the SuperTech valve springs, I've got the, the titanium retainers and all that good stuff. So we've put all them on. Uh, again, I was going to leave the lifters, the hydraulic lifters. I did actually squeeze them together in oil, got all the crap out and everything. But after, again, after thinking about it, it done 100,000. Again, I rang Volkswagen. They were like, to us with a discount and without VAT tax. They were like, they were like 15 quid each and for 24, it's loads. So I got these Motive ones from Euro. They're like four pounds from each. So I've got a full set of new lifters, which I'm gonna cover that in a minute. I'm gonna take this rocker out with a lifter on it just to show you how to do it. But yeah, that's what I'm just gonna cover. So I've covered everything I've done with the head. I'm just gonna show you how to do the rocker and the lifter quick there. Um, and then I'm just gonna get the cams in. 
I'm gonna need to lock the cams in as I put it out. I've got the crank in the right position, so the crank is timed. I've got the cam set and bar, which I'm gonna put in. I'm basically gonna sit the cams on, get them with a the locking bar in, put all the caps on, and then we're just gonna tighten the nuts down slowly, just so when the cams come down, everything's timed in the cam department and then the crank's in the right place so because you need to watch out that if you're tightening the cam down it's going to be pushing certain valve down you need to pay, make sure it's not pushing a valve down with a piston at the top so you bend it basically so obviously this is on tdc1 with the crank in the right place so if you put the cam setting bar in the cams as they sit there without the pressure down then as we tighten it down everything should be as it should be ready to put the timing chain on which will be the next video so yeah i'm going to get the camera on. we'll put the camera facing down i'll go over one of the lifter and one of the rockers show you the um double valve springs up close may just do that on a picture or something just because it's awkward with the camera um and then we'll just talk, we'll, we'll put the cams in uh, that'll be it for this video so hopefully it should be short and sweet let's spin the camera around and get to it right so this is the lifter and the rocker this, that's the new lifter, the rockers are the old ones. I'll clip it off quickly just to show you how it works. So basically if you're changing your lifters, um, all you need is this bit, see that? <laughs> yeah, so you just have your lifter like this, uh, you clip, you, I'm not gonna pull that off, but basically you, you pop this old off your old lifter, pop onto the new one with these tangs facing up, um, and then one tang has little side bits and the other one's a bit bigger on a flat um, So what you want to do is on this part Just here obviously that head sits in there um, This side the bigger one that hasn't got the side bits hooks around the back of there like that Just hold that in place and then you just literally pull that back and pop that on and that just holds it So it should just been like that um, and then obviously you've got your hole here. You want to put this in oil. What I did was after I built them all I literally left them submerged in oil um, and then you literally just Slide that into the hole. You just rock it around a little bit and then you'll see it's a bit awkward and fiddler And then this bit just sits on on the top of the valve You'll, you'll feel it when it's on because when you try and go side to side you can't go side to side It sits on the little top bit um, but yeah, that's pretty much for the, for the lifter. You just make sure that's clipped on, uh, put all oil in it. These were did, these actually did have oil already have oil in because I squished them together because um, I was going to try and fill them with oil, and basically they've already got oil in. Um, so just leave them su submerged in oil, and any air or whatever should get out. They're going to have to jack up when you start it anyway. Um, but yeah, that covers that. As for the, I'm not going to get the camera in on the double valves. What I'll do is I'll just put some pictures up now. As you can see, you, you, with the camera, it just won't focus properly and stuff. It ain't worth it. So now we've cut, you've seen the double valve springs. I've showed you how to clip the lifters back onto these rockers. I've showed you how to put the rocker back in and sit it on top of the sit on top properly. You just work, before you drop your cams in, you want to make sure you do all this. Um, so now I'm just going to show you where I kept all my cams and my caps, um, and then we'll get it all cleaned down and we'll start putting it in. I'll show you we like. The numbered, the caps are numbered because you need to put your caps back in the same place. But yeah, we'll spin around. I'll show you where I kept my cams and the caps um, and then we'll start putting it in. Right, this is where I kept both my cams, all the caps and both the cam pulleys. Um, what you'll see on here where it says left. So you've got left and right just so you can lay them out. Um, so you know which one's what. Obviously, this is fill fair because it's sat upstairs for ages. I am going to clean all of this down. I'm not going to put the cans in while they're this fill fair. But I just wanted to show you quick there. Um, so yeah, you can just put your, your caps out. They are in number, which I'll show you as I fit them. I'm going to clean both the cams. Um, if you get any anything mixed up with like the, the cam pulleys, you can just run the part number that's on them just so you can make sure. As long as you put everything in the right place, say if you couldn't remember which was left, which was right, I would do videos. I always do videos and pictures just saying uh, right side, in left, left side, you know what I mean? So I can go back to it. But also, as long as you make sure you keep the cam pullet with on the right side of the cam, you can just run the part number just to make sure it's the intake one and the exhaust one because we've got different part numbers. Stops you getting confused, but this is where I've kept everything, it is dirt air. So what I'm gonna do is off camera, I'm just gonna clean all this quickly and then we'll jump back over to the engine where I'm gonna start putting the cams in. Uh, the, I will say now, the cam, these cam pulleys, they, the bolts are meant to be changed. So they're not meant to be used again. I have got, I've got new bolts for them. I've got new solenoids to control these as well. But I, what, I did want to get new cam pulleys, but they're like 400, 450 quid each, I think they are. 
So uh, yeah, I'm not paying a grand on them when I had no problems with them before, so I just reuse them. But yeah, let's go clean it. I'm gonna go clean them down and then we'll start putting them in the engine. Right, I've cleaned, I've cleaned the cams, um, lubed them all, sat them in, lubed the top as well and got all the caps on. What I'll do is to show you all of the caps, I'm gonna show you what I'll do is I'll put the video now that I originally did of the order of the way the caps come off. It's not a very good video because I only did it for my own reference, but I'll put that on now. Right, I'm standing on the inlet side. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you've seen that, another video I'll show as well. Obviously I did a video for what, what cam was in the left and the right section on that tray. Um, I'll just show you that as well another again. It's only a crap little video just for me But I'll show you just so you can see the videos I do so I know that everything's going back in the right place So I'll put that up now Right so right hand side Is the exhaust side Left hand side is Inlet side now you've seen that, we'll just cover this. So basically you've seen what order the caps go. It does matter which way the caps go around, the numbers where they are, they're from the inlet side. So all the numbers you should see looking from this way. Um, what I've got is, this is the, the setting bar for the cams. This is where you lock the cams for the timing. Obviously, as you can see, it's loose at the minute because the cams are sitting up in the air. What you've got to bear in mind is, some of these, when you're putting the, pushing the cams down, it's going to be opening some valves. That's why, for one, you need to make sure the timing's right, so your crank needs to be in the right position, otherwise this is pointless. So you need your crank in the right position, um, the, the timing mark, so once your crank's in the right position, which will be TDC1, I set it before I put the head on, but double check it anyway. You can see it on the crankshaft puller. Um, so you do that, put this in, and then we need to wind this down. Now, you need to be careful because these are only small studs. You need to do a little bit at a time because you're pushing it down. The other thing is I've got double valve springs, so they're going to be even harder. So before you even start doing a torque setting or whatever, literally just keep going over these a little bit at a time. Try and spread it out as much as you can until you get them all the way down. And then we'll do the torque setting. So yeah, for now, I'm just going to get a small ratchet. We're just going to wind them down a little bit at a time until we get them flat. When we get them flat, this plate should then be sitting flat on the top of the, on this face, basically on the top of the head. Um, so it won't be wiggler so the the, the the slots in these are offset so you need the slot in the top in the top section um and then you just tighten them down which we'll start doing now Ideally, you want to do these cams even there, just because when you're pulling the bar down, you won't want it to be pulling down on just one cam. Don't put no force on them, just keep nipping them down and then just move to a different one and you'll feel another one's gone loose as it pulls it down. So just keep doing it even. The reason I'm doing it mostly down here is because this is where it's trying to push the cams down. Um, obviously, as you can see, this is pretty much all the way down. So just keep working it where it's up and just do a little bit, a little bit at a time. Just keep turning them a bit, whichever one feels kind of loose, just nip it a little bit until you can feel it pull in and then move to another one. Just keep doing them even on both on both cans until we get them all the way down. Pay attention to the threads in the in the nut because you can get an idea of which one's further down than the others. You want to try and keep moving around to keep them even because you can also do too much on one side. You don't want to cock it to the left or the right. So just keep checking the nuts and getting an idea of which one's high, which one's low. Um, and if you need to, even back one off. Say like this one where this is a high point. If it feels like it's getting tight, maybe move to this one because as you tighten this one down, it'll help ease the pressure off there. Right, so these are all touched down, all of them, one over even layer, they're all touched down to where they need to be. Um, now you're going to do the torque quick layer. I mean, the torque on these are pretty shit. You're going to do them all to five newton meters and then 45 degrees, which is basically nothing. Uh, but we'll, we'll do it anyway, it's a bit shit to do. I hate doing angles. Uh, like anything else, I'd, 
ideally you want to probably start around the middle area and go up just to spread the weight properly you now this this torque wrench the lowest it goes is 6.8 Right, because I've touched these down, they're probably already over torqued. See, it's shit because it's under tension. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to back off these ones in the centre, and then I'm going to torque them. Alright, so uh, that's it for the torque, and then 45 degrees. Hold it like that, and then go 45. Best thing to do is have the ratchet like that, and then come off. So if 90's there, you can kind of feel after you've done a couple. So. Did them for yeah, I think they feel all good. Still goes in. It's, um, nice and flat on the head, but it still moves. It's not it's not stuck or bound up or anything. Uh, so that's good. Crank's in the right position, so everything should be ready to put the chain on. The only things we've got left is the um, the pulleys that go on here. Um, I'm gonna go take them and clean them now. Right, what I've actually just thought is you can't actually put you can't actually put these on yet. Um, there's a housing that goes on here that basically the, the fluid for for this, uh, for the cam adjuster, runs through here. There's actually a housing that goes on here. This housing needs to go on before this goes on, because otherwise you won't be able to get it on after. Um, so I'm gonna call it a day on this video. Um, just to just to cover everything. When you do come to put this on, obviously there's a peg that you can see in the end of the cam. There's only, you can't, you need to put it where the where the peg is basically to get it in the right position. Uh, so what you put it on, and then you've got your, your new bolts that you need to put in. I've got the two new bolts here. Um, the torque spec is, I've just checked it, it's 60 newton meters and then 90 degrees. So like I said, again, you need to use the spanner on that, but obviously you need to have this housing on first. So align, put the, you need to get the housing on, uh, get everything ready, you put these on. But I'll, what I'll do is I'll cover that lot in the time and chain one. So yeah, that'll do for today's video. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.